Hello to each expert. You're here with me, Sergei Filipov, and this is a new episode of the Map Tactics Show. Sleeping Giant is a piece of Chinese coastline in World of Warships. Attentive players can find a lot of landmarks there. For example, a piece of the Great Wall of China, or the famous 8-square, 30-floor Buddhist Chinese pagoda, and many other gorgeous pavilions and temples. Battles between Tier 9 to 10 ships will simmer amidst all these fantastic sites in the domination mode, with four or three key areas. Key Area A is a ring of islands which you can enter from the west and east. At first glance, it may seem that the ship entering the ring will be totally protected from the enemies. But there are several gaps between the islands and enemies can pour down their shells at you through them. The key area can be easily scanned with radar, so you'll never feel safe there. The center of the map is open, so large ships shouldn't go in there at the beginning of the battle. You'll get covered in enemy shells from top to bottom almost immediately. It's more rational to stay at the edge of the zone and support your allied offensive through flanks, or destroyers through the center. A cruiser at such a position can both support their team by advancing in almost any direction, and effectively spot enemy ships in the center using their equipment. The central and eastern parts of the map are divided by a chain of islands. The ships with a torpedo armament on board can be very effective in the straits between the islands. Moreover, the straits provide you with shortcuts to move between the key areas quickly. The islands at points C5, D8, G5 and H8 can be used both as cover for retreating and for supporting the Allied offensive. While standing behind the islands, you can fire without risk of being spotted. Artillery destroyers should use the eastern entrance for capturing key area A. You can use the western entrance only when you know the locations of enemy destroyers and while the key area is unoccupied. After capturing key area A, you can stay there and control one or two lines if the enemy might break through there. Or you can flank the opponent at line 5, going there through the center. At key area D, a radar cruiser may come in handy for destroyers. On Sleeping Giant, light cruisers can follow destroyers while taking cover behind the islands. At exactly these passages, around key area D, designated with the arrows, you should position cruisers that fire shells along a high trajectory. They can both control key area D and fire at the ships moving along line 9 or 10. Around key area A, light cruisers shouldn't move out from behind the islands at line 3 too quickly. You should wait for battleships. If a light cruiser possesses high enough speed, she will definitely be able to rush to key area A through the western entrance. Alas, it will be complicated for her to leave the key area without taking damage. Heavy cruisers, together with battleships, move along open water, while the former cover the latter with their powerful anti-aircraft guns. The main directions for battleships are lines C and H. You can stay at line 7 and 3 for longer if there are good targets at the opposite flanks. If key area A has been captured by allies and your team controls the western part of the map, you can take a short path through the key area. You can act the same way through the straits at E6 through F7, only if all enemy destroyers have been sunk. Of course, these are just some of the possible tactical solutions available on Sleeping Giant. Everyone can find their own approach to this map. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like the videos, and share them with your friends. Good luck in battle, Captains!